course DIY you're going to be needing these kind of bubble candle molds and we got them from an online store so you can also get them from Amazon or anywhere else nextly you'll need this kind of a needle this is a big needle so that I can punch a hole through the candle mold and next you'll need a thread for the candle so as you guys can see I'm passing the thread through the needle hole So next I'll just mark the place where I want to pierce the candle mold so that I can insert the thread inside. So now as you guys can see I'm piercing the candle mold and making sure that the thread comes out of the candle mold evenly like from the top and the bottom as well. Nextly, I'll cut the excess thread off. After flipping the mold, I'll take a wooden clip and as you guys can see, I'm clipping the thread in the center so that it stays in the center. And as you guys can see, we are done with prepping our mold. So next, I'll be taking these kind of candle pigments and these are candle making pigments which you can get online. So after that, I'll melt some candle wax into the pan and add some pigment. So as you guys can see, um, we are making a gradient candle. So make sure that your first layer is very light. So after that, I'll just pour the melting wax into the mold. So while making a gradient candle, you need to make sure that you are checking each time you add pigment onto a side with a spoon. Just pour it onto any surface and check whether the color is light or not. So now to make the second layer darker, we just need to add more pigment into the wax so that our second layer gets more darker than the first layer. So you just need to check it onto the side with a spoon, just pour a little bit of wax from the pan onto any surface. And you guys can see after it dries out that it is dark or not. Same goes with the last layer, just make sure that it is darkest so you need to add more and more pigment than you added into the first and the second layer. So it's the next day and now our candle is dry and you guys can see how it looks so we just have to remove the clip and then get it out of the mold. As you guys can see here is how our candle looks like and the first and the second layer is looking pretty much the same on camera i don't know why but we just have to cut the excess thread off and we are done so now as you guys can see we have also made like this mini bubble candle too using the same technique <laughs> So for this next DIY, you will need some clay and it's totally up to you if you want to go with air dry clay or polymer clay, but we are using air dry one. As you guys can see, I'm just flattening the clay out by rolling it and you guys can see the clay is pretty much flattened right here. So what I'll do next is to cut the clay with some kind of cutter. So I'm just taking a cutter and cutting the clay in some random kind of shape. I'm just making a splash kind of shape. So just randomly cut the shape. As I'm going with a free hand, you also just don't need to go into the details. Just do whatever you want to and make whatever shape you like. But make sure that it is really nice and splashy. 
so after making the base shape i'm just going to take some water in order to make the clay really nice and smooth so i'm just smoothing the edges out using some water because water is the thing that can really make the clay nice and smooth see i've also made one more splash as well as a square so next i'll be painting these things and you guys can also use the colored clay but we are painting them with acrylic paints so you guys can see after it's painted it looks like this and let it dry for a while and i'll move on to the square so you need to base coat the square with a white color So after painting the square white, we just have to make a grid kind of design onto the square. So you just need to make some vertical as well as horizontal lines in a square shape. Now as you guys can see, our grid is ready and we have also marked the places where we want to do the blue color. As you guys can see it's pretty much done so after these clay coasters are dry i'm just going to be applying a layer of mod podge slash white glue onto the coaster so that they can look glossy and we are done <music> So for this next DIY, you'll need a thread and make sure that your thread is strong enough and the length should be a lot more than you want it to be. So just make sure it's extra in length. So next, I'll be taking this kind of iron strip which came with a punch needle thing and you guys can see how it looks like. You can totally DIY it if you don't have it, but this is only to insert the pearls into the thread because my pearls are really like small and they don't have a big hole so that they are not passing through the thread and anyways so that is why i had to use this thing to pass them through the wire so after adding the beads onto the strip i'm just passing the thread through the loop and making sure that all the beads are onto the thread and nextly the steps are pretty easy because you just need to add on beads and this is a simple process that you need to do first side i'm moving on to the second one but make sure that the c-shaped loop between both of the sides is empty because that is where the string or the phone strap will attach to the phone
I'm done adding the beads, you need to make sure that one side is a little longer than the other one and make sure that the upper side is also a little empty and equal. So you just need to tie a knot onto the bottommost side and you guys can see. So you just need to tie the first knot really lightly so the beads don't move from their place. But the second, third and the fourth knot should be really tight so that our phone strap is sturdy enough. I'll recommend you guys to go with four to five five knots. So now we just have to tie the upper kind of thing so that our strap is complete and the beads don't move from their place so you just need to follow the steps. can see i'll cut the excess thread and now you guys can see our knot is pretty much disappeared into the beads and we are done So for the next DIY, you'll need a pot or a planter. So what you have to do is to take a pencil and then draw some kind of waves all over the pot. And you guys can see we have drawn three lines. So you just have to do the same. Just draw three lines all over the pot. So after making these lines, you just have to make faces of moon in the center. So make sure that you draw a circle, a half moon and a crescent moon on each side. paints to paint the faces of moon as well as the layers so you guys can see i'm going with the pink color for the one layer using yellow color to paint the second wave so now as you guys can see i'm done with my first layer and you guys can see i did the second layer too and that is how it looks like so for the phases of moon i'll be using gold color so in case you are wondering this is golden acrylic paint and you guys can also get it from the market easily I'm done painting the phases of the moon I'm just moving on to the border and the paint was not that thick so I had to do two layers in order to get the required opacity and here is how the finished product looks like